Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's class will be on uh, achieving excellence. It's interesting, many of us uh, go through life just kind of punching in and out and uh, content to just get by. But then there are others who actually uh, strive for excellence. So I read something that a wise man said. So what, how, what is excellence? So he said that excellence can be achieved if you risk more than others think is safe, love more than others think is wise, dream more than others think is practical, and expect more than others think is possible. So let's break that down. What does it mean, risk more than others think is safe? In the Torah, we see that Abram Avinu, Abraham, went, to, went against the four kings to save his nephew Lot. Some say with a small army, some say just with himself and his servant. Again, risking more. The Jews leaving Egypt with Passover coming, they had no food, no provisions other than the matzah on their, on their backs that they took with them. And they went into the wilderness and they again risked more than was safe. Nachshon ben Aminadov from the tribe of Yehuda when they were at the sea and the Egyptians were at their back. He jumped into the sea and that's what caused the sea to split. Again, risking more than was safe. In life, in order to make an omelet, you have to break a few eggs. A person has to be willing to do that. Now, it doesn't mean to be reckless. We see that Henry Ford, Hershey from Hershey, Pennsylvania, both went bankrupt five times. You know, you learn nothing from success. You learn a whole lot from failure. As I always say, good judgment comes from experience and experience from bad judgment. What does it mean to love more than is wise? We see that David and Yonason is one of the greatest loves that the Torah talks about. And Yonason was a prince, the son of Shaul, and King David was the one who would take away his kingdom. And one would think that how would you love someone like that? It's really someone who's come very much competitive to take away your position. And yet the love between them was unmeasurable. We see that Yaakov loved Rachel. Even though love unduped him and he married Leah first, he still worked another seven years for her. Again, to love more than his wise. And because of that, he had two glorious sons from her. Yosef and Binyamin, again, those that were some of the greatest fact. Yosef, we know, was the one who supplied the whole family with food in the world. And Binyamin was one of the four people in history that never sinned. And then Rivka with Yaakov, her son, when she told Yaakov to take the blessing that was meant for Esau, that she was willing to take the curse of her husband that everyone was afraid of on herself, just so her son would have what she felt he needed, to the point that once he took the blessing, he had to run for his life, and she never saw him again, nor her grandchildren, until the day she died. She died, in fact, with the strangers bearing her. There was no son to bury her at the time, and Yitzhak was blind. And also we see in the Torah, it says, V'yahavta l'reacha kamocha, of loving your friend as yourself. And again, that's loving more than is wise, because the, the commandment is really not to love people that are lovable. The commandment is to love people that are difficult. Again, not always wise. And in life, people are afraid to expose themselves, to show the emotion. They're afraid to say, I love you first, for fear that it won't be returned. Truth of the matter is that we're so worried about rejection, we're afraid to open up. And the truest love is an unselfish love of a mother for a child. And that's loving with without any boundaries, to love more than his wives. A person has to have a passion in life. That's what brings excellence, without any thoughts of parameters. And then it says again, to dream more than others think is practical. And in Torah we see again, Yaakov, when he was at the Temple Mount, and the dream of Yaakov, Jacob's a ladder. Something that made no sense that the angels moving up and down a sign for him for the future. And then his son, who followed in his footsteps, Yosef, the true dreamer. 
His dreams caused him much grief, caused, him the, caused the brothers to sell him into slavery. And yet, it was his dreams and the ability to be able to recognize what they were that catapulted him into greatness in a second. The first, the beginning of the day, he was a prisoner, and by the middle of the day, he was the viceroy of Egypt, second most powerful man in the world. We believe in the concept of Chachmah, Chachmah's wisdom. But what Chachmah really is, is a dream. Chachmah is really Koachma, broken up into two words, which is really a seminal flash. A person's whole life is made in 30 seconds. An idea pops into your mind. Where does it come from? An inspiration from God. But generally, these ideas come to people that are searching for ideas. A person in life has to be a bit of a dreamer, to think outside the box, that a person shouldn't be limited by what others think or others believe. We do have the parameters of Torah, but in our tefillin, we have four sections, in the head tefillin and in the arm tefillin, only one. And there's really the same information in both. And the reason why it's all in one on the arm is because when it comes down to the action, everyone has to do it the same way. But the four sections on the head allude to the fact that each one of us can be individuals and think different ideas and find different ways to serve God, but also to live in the world, to find better ways, to find new ways, to find innovations. Again, that's what changes the world. Again, high aspirations, not accepting what was done before building a better mousetrap. You know, look at the world today. Amazing. Breakneck speed. People just keep coming up with more and more because there are no restraints. You need to dream more that is impractical to achieve excellence. And then expect more than others think is possible. How critical. We see that our whole existence, the fact that we are Jews today, and the Jewish nation was taken out of Egypt by one, one person only, by Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest of all prophets. And he really should have been drowned in the Nile. And somehow Basia, the daughter of Paro, goes down to the Nile. And she sees this basket floating in the Nile. And it is a great distance away from her. And yet she reaches out with her hand which was impossible. And somehow a miracle happened and her hand extended all the way to the basket and brought the basket in. In fact, the word Moshe comes the word Masui, to be pulled in from the water. And we see that even with Moshe Rabbeinu, after the Jews had sinned with the golden calf, and they built the Mishkan, the tabernacle, they couldn't put it up. They could get it up. They couldn't keep it up. And they came to Moshe and they said, Moshe, we can't do this. But Moshe Rabbeinu, again, expected more than was possible. And he knew that there was a rod that had to go in all the way around the corners, something that wasn't possible. And yet, he was able to do it. In fact, Moshe, Moshe much like God, creating the world, was able to somehow put the roof of the tabernacle up first and then the walls, expecting more than is possible. And look at Hanukkah. The Jews retook the temple. And they could have actually lit the menorah with oil that was not pure, that was, that was defiled. But they wanted to do the mitzvah, the commandment, in the pristine state. And they only had enough oil for one night, one day. And they did what was impossible because they expected it to do and it happened. There was a rabbi whose uh, attendant came to him and told him that that night the boys would not be able to learn because they had no oil. And the rabbi asked the shamus, the, the sexton, what do we have? And he said, vinegar. And the rabbi said to him, put vinegar in the lamps. He who makes oil can burn, burn can make vinegar burn. And that night the boys learned through the lamps that were burning on vinegar. 
Expect more than what people think is possible. And in the secular world, we need really, in both, I guess, is to think 100%. But let's be realistic. If a person thinks 100% that he's going to strive for complete excellence, will he reach 100%? And the truth is, maybe not. Maybe he'll hit 75. So why shouldn't the person just be realistic and say, you know what? I'm going to just shoot for 75%. And the answer is, he'll get 50. You need to aim high. And if nothing else, you'll go higher. The word triumph means try with more oomph. You know, somehow in life, you get on a roll. There's, there's a thing in Pirkei Elvis that says, mitzvah goreras mitzvah and avera goreras avera. That one good deed brings on another good deed, one bad deed. One sin brings on another sin. You get on a roll. And a person needs to see things in a positive way. Expect to win. And take small successes. You don't have to chew the whole thing in one bite. Peck away at it. Little successes. And that's how you bring it down. And confidence, not, not conceit. In order for a person to make the impossible happen, you have to have confidence. You need to believe. And when you believe, especially when you connect to the source, God Almighty himself, anything and everything is possible. There's a Hasidic statement that says, think good, and it will be good. That a person has to always put himself in a positive light, and what you have then is positive results. I heard a beautiful thing that said, in the end, we always say that it'll be good. So guess what? If it's not good, it's not the end. We really need to learn, whenever you're beaten by anyone, always look at how he beat you. I remember hearing the story, watching a movie, and seeing how Patton, the great general, when he was fighting Rommel in the desert, he was reading his book at the same time. He was using Rommel's own strategy against him. And reading the book, he was just calling out loud, Rommel, you're a genius. <laughs> you're a genius. And he defeated him. And that's what we need to do with our evil inclination that wants us to be lazy, that wants us to accept mediocrity, that does not want us to strive for excellence. Excellence in everything that we do. And the amazing part is we do not need to achieve that excellence. We only need to strive for that excellence. Because striving for excellence really means to give it all that you have, to put all your efforts into it, to not let anybody talk you out the fact that you're going to lose. You don't want to hear it. You won't accept that. Success is God's. There are stupid people in this world that are very wealthy. There are brilliant people that can't make a living. Success is God's. But what is not God's and what he pays us for is effort. The more effort you put in, every drop of effort will be paid back. No, no amount of effort will be lost. And the person, even in a secular sense, there's no greater joy than as we, the term of leaving it all on the field, of putting in everything that you have into what you do, to commit yourself, not just partially, but like Nakshon, to jump into the sea completely, not just wiggle your toes, and test the water, but jump in. And if a person does that, then excellence can be achieved by risking more than others think is safe, by loving more than others think is wise, by dreaming more than others think is practical, and by expecting more than others think is possible. May God give us strength and direction to be able to accomplish that. Thank you and have a good Shabbos.